Social media is a strange place. And although it's extremely popular to focus on the negative aspects of the various social platforms, that is only one side of the equation. The conversation you're about to hear would not have been possible without Instagram. I started engaging with Mike Dunn's content over a year ago, and we started conversing through direct message. Today was the first time chatting face to face, and it did not disappoint. We discussed the power of optimism, abundance mindset, and the one thing. Mike is authentic. Um, I'm extremely grateful for him, the journey that he is on, and how he continues to document his process for us to follow. My own personal enjoyment of the game of basketball has increased tremendously because of him, and it's really hard to quantify the value that that brings to my life. I hope you guys enjoy this interview, and here is a conversation with Mike Dunn. I am now joined by the self-proclaimed most handsome shooting coach on the internet, Mike Dunn. Mike, how are you? I'm fantastic. That's not just self-proclaimed at this point. I think this is this is. <laughs> it's called knowledge. I, I spoke it at this point. I've spoken it into existence enough that I feel like, you know, it's it just is what it is. It's point. it's it is what it is, and. If you don't know Mike, um, I post a lot of his stuff because in a lot of ways, he's like my mentor in terms of shooting coaches um, and I'll have all of his information there. Um, but I think what it highlights is the positive aspects of social media. Um, I know there's been a lot of negativity surrounding social media platforms in general. In what ways has social media um, impacted your life positively? I guess would be the, my first question for you. I mean, everything. But like I, I, I went into it with a very positive type idea, right? So I went into social media with the whole idea of I like initially my whole thing was I just want to bridge the gap between parents and their kids. Mm-hmm. Like that was it. That's all I wanted to do. So if you're going into something at the at the beginning and your mindset is already I'm just I know I'm offering some type of service for somebody else here, you know, usually what's going to come back your way is more positivity. So what's been awesome about it for me, and I know that, that it has its pitfalls for sure, right? But what's been awesome about it for me is that within in four years, it's been four years now since I started it, I've developed a community that there's very little negativity that mm-hmm. surrounds it. Like, of course, there's some people that would like come on and, and, and say things or send me messages that are, that are you know, hit, no, you know it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. But in the, in the, like in the grand scheme of what I've, like what we've, I don't want to say I, because I want to say we, because I literally have a 100% organic community in which I've never paid for anything. Like mm-hmm. it's just come. And then it's people that have gravitated towards that and they have maintained this idea of, of, of helping. Right. So it can be really cool, man. It can be really cool, a really cool way to connect with people all over the world that are very similar in mindset to you, which mm-hmm. I feel like we all go through this. Uh, I know that I, like, me personally, I would be like, man, there's not a lot of people around me that think the way I think, right? Which is probably me more like self-sabotaging at the same time, thinking that I don't, but there is, like there definitely is. But at least the, the internet can open you up that much quicker to more people that are like-minded and that's where it can become really, really cool. No, absolutely. And just in general, like you, you seem, your outlook on life just seems very positive in general. Is that something that you've always had or is there events in your life that you have kind of, steered you to that path of, of positivity? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm all, I've always been a pretty upbeat person, but there's definitely been events that have happened um, that have make, shifted my perspective on what is important mm. and what is, what is it that, I'm really, that I really want to do, you know what I mean? And then learning, I, I think the biggest thing is when you really make up your mind that you want to do something, like my whole, my whole thing, and I've said it many times, I want to be the best shooting coach in the world. There's not even a metric that can measure that, right? Like no one, yeah. there's nothing, there's no one, that, there's never going to be a list that comes out that says number one shooter. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't measure it. But like in my mind, I have that to work towards every day. So it's like, why not be pumped up about it, dude? You know mm. what I mean? Like uh, one, of my, one, of, one of my favorite authors, Earl Nightingale, but he's more than an author. He always said that success is the, uh, what does he say? He considers sex, success as the continuous progress or something tor- towards a worthy ideal. Waking up every day and just pursuing something. And mm-hmm. if you do that, you're successful, right? So 
that's that's why I think like I'm just I'm happy for a really the majority of the time I'm pretty darn happy because I'm yeah, yeah. constantly working towards something. And what what has uh, what has oh, you have a, a beautiful young daughter? How has that impacted your perspective of things? Um, I don't. Maybe this is the wrong answer. I don't think it shifted things that mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Like it, I was already in a pretty good state of mind. Having her, having her, makes you see things a little bit. Like I told my wife the other day, we were on our way to daycare, and she just the the moon was still out. It was like daytime, but the moon was still out, and she was like in a like complete awe of the moon right like over and over again she was like oh my she just kept saying hi moon hi moon and it's little moments like that that bring me back to how much we always take for granted around us all the time but like that's her first real relationship with the moon how many times do we see the moon and we're like eh you know what i mean like it's not that big of a deal Mm. so it's like if she can be that excited about the moon i can be that excited when i have a client that just understood the connection of moving ball before body you know what I mean? And it's like, if I'm not that excited every time, if I can't find joy in that each time, what's the, what's the point? Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like you can connect the dots a little bit there. No, that's, that's awesome. And I know the, the interactions I have with like little cousins um, is that the same type of thing is just seeing the joy in children's face. Oh, so it's the best. Simple things, man. The best. Um, best. One, one thing that stands out to me and even just in this, the short span of this conversation is just how, um, how thoughtful of a communicator you are. Um, you're very, right. you're very specific with your words. Um, you're very careful with your words. Um, is that a, a skill that came naturally to you? Um, is that something that you've kind of intentionally worked on um, that skill of communication? Intentionally, man, intentionally, because for sure I was, I think up until, so I'm 33 now mm-hmm. and I would say undoubtedly, I don't think I really stepped into who I really am until I was like 28 or 29. Right. And then when I did that, it was a, it was, a, it was a conscious shift towards learn to communicate better, learn to speak better, uh, have no problem with communicating who you are, your thoughts or all this kind of stuff. And it's just been a gradual process of building that out. But that's, that's through, that's where social media can be amazing too, because you can try things, man. Like yeah, early absolutely. on, even when like no one knew who I was, I could go on there and, and, and just talk. And just talking in general is gonna, you're gonna get better at it, right? You're just mm-hmm. gonna, you're gonna start to learn. So. That's where it can be a cool thing. But yeah, man, 100% conscious because I used to be scared to death to talk in front of people mm. like, like petrified, man, yeah, yeah. petrified to the point now where it's like, I don't even think about it anymore. It's just, and I think that comes from doing it, but it also comes from knowing what you're talking about. Right. I, it's, that's pretty easy, but, but yeah, man, conscious thing, very, very conscious, trying to just push myself to get more and more comfortable with it all the time. Was there particular people that you watched um, to kind of take cues from in terms of like a communication style? Um, obviously you said that you just did it as, as one way of learning, but I know um, like mentors play a huge role in, in your development. Uh, Rob Boder obviously being one of the, the main ones. Um, was right. there people that you looked at as almost like ideals in terms of how they, they spoke uh, and how they communicated, how they taught? I don't think, I don't think I took, I think what happened was I listened to so much content all of the time, like whether it's listening to a book or like for the longest time, everything was very geared towards like self-development. So I would constantly listen to Tony Robbins and constantly listen to Les Brown and constantly listen to Jim Rohn. Right. And I think what happens is you start to listen to that stuff and then it like plants this seed in you and you're picking up on, oh, wow, these are some of the best communicators in the world. How are you going to start to make make that your own stuff? Rob Fodor said something awesome to me the one time. Have you ever seen Finding Forrester? I've not, no. All right. Well, first of all, do that. <laughs> okay. Second of all, there's a part in Finding Forrester. The kid's an author. This isn't giving anything away. Uh, and plus, I think the movie came out in like 95, so there's no spoilers anymore. But the kid was an author, and he was struggling to write. He was struggling to, to, to write an original piece. Mm-hmm. And Sean Connery, RIP, uh, Sean Connery was a, this prolific writer that, that this kid kind of stumbled upon. And what he told him was, he was like, sometimes you can use the beginning words of somebody else, right? You can use the words of, 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 of something that's already been written to inspire an original piece of work, right? Yep. And so Rob and I were talking about this because in a way he's like my Sean Connery in this, right? Because mm-hmm. he has inspired me tenfold, but 
I've did the same, but you, but you, what, what you understand is that you'll do this with anything you want to become good at. You're going to use benchmarks and people that have already done it. And you're probably going to start out sounding a lot like them. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you're going to find your own voice as time goes on. Right. And that, like that, that is the, uh, that's what I think happened with me with speaking. And then obviously with teaching, I've used somebody else's template template and then slowly finding where I'm comfortable right mm -hmm. and then finding your own voice finding your own language so if you haven't seen that movie it's, it's one of my favorite movies of all time but there's little things in that movie that are just like they're like little profound profound jewels man yeah yeah no that'll definitely be added that was finding forrester finding forrester all right awesome. that'll be that'll and it's be basketball awesome. it has basketball oh. in it too so Very, it's, it's, it's added awesome. bonus yes yes um i guess one of the um one of the things that I, I love about yourself and I think Rob's the same way is just your, your willingness to share um, very much of someone who has, you know, abundance mindset. Um, where do you think, or what causes you to have that, that mindset or where's the, I guess the, the, the one, one person might think of, Oh, I have all this information. I want to keep it to myself because it's like, it's my area of expertise um, what was, the, what was the factor of you wanting to now just uh, you share and you are mm -hmm. so generous with your content? Because at the end of the day, this is the way I kind of look at, it. I can share as much as I want to share. Like I can share everything on a certain, on a certain level. It's going to take a certain commitment to take that information and then really start to understand and use it. Right. right. So it doesn't really matter how much I share because at the end of the day, like if you really want to get good at it, you're probably going to have to come to me to kind of really mm -hmm. understand and get into the nitty gritty of what's going on. Right. So mm -hmm. I'll, for an example, I have a lot of people that will take what I do and they'll just, they'll see something and then they'll start to apply it. And then I've had people come back to me and say, Hey man, I was doing this specific drill and it doesn't work. Right. It wasn't working with my kids. And I'll say, well, what did you tell them? And he said, well, I, I just showed them the move. I just showed them what to do. And then they weren't understanding it. And I said, well, that's, that's your job. That's mm -hmm. your job to make them understand it. I said, it's ignorant on your behalf as a teacher to take, a, take something you've seen and just start to apply it without understanding the why, the why behind it, right? So that's kind of my thing is, it doesn't really matter to me how much I give away. I know there's gonna be a very, very select few people like yourself, right? That really dig into stuff, mm -hmm. right? But that's, that's rare. That's very, very rare. We're at a time where people think that you're going to take a big, huge takeaway from a 15 second real clip on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it, it takes hours upon hours upon hours of really digging in and doing it yourself and going through it to get to that point of understanding it enough to even communicate it. You know what I mean? So like, that's why, because at the end of the day, I, I don't care. You could take it. I'm willing to bet this will make me sound like a jerk in a little bit, but I'm willing to bet you're not going to be able to teach it the same way I teach it. Yeah. I don't think that's, that's just the, like, that's just self-confidence. Like right. And people can attribute self-confidence to being a jerk, but at the end of the right. day, you, you know, your intention behind it. Right. 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 Um, I know books have played a huge role in your, your self-development um, over the last, especially since kind of lockdown um, for all of us. And I know one book that you've talked about recently was the one thing, um, yes. Gary Keller, great book. Um, and the premise of it is, He's prepared and he, the premise of it is finding the, the most important, whether it's the most important action that will lead to the greatest amount of results. I think that's a, great, a decent way to sum it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, your area of expertise is shooting the basketball. And I know you've posted about it recently and in regards to the book, but if you could explain what you think the, the one thing in shooting the basketball is, the floor is yours. Yeah. So I actually, I, I did a podcast, I, my own podcast recently that I haven't done for a while. And I talked about this and I'm going to repeat it because the more I can tell it, the better I'm going to get at it. Mm. So there's one page. In, so this is the second time I've read this book. So I read it twice and somebody I consider a mentor. I had never thought about reading books multiple times. I, for some reason, like as much as I love to read, I didn't think about reading books over and over again. Mm. He came to me. He was like, you need to read these again. Like read it. You know, there, you can always take away something new. And so I started doing that. So I returned back to the one thing and there's a certain page in which Gary talks about leverage. And this is where he started out with the quote by Archimedes that said, give me a lever long enough and I can move the world. Meaning, mm -hmm. you know, 
you can move something with relative ease, but with, with great force, right? That's, that's, that's a possibility. So yep. that's where my mind went to shooting the basketball. And that's really what we're trying to do. We just create levers within our body. We try to create, we try to create enough energy that can be put into the basketball that we can move the ball effortlessly. So I'm thinking to myself, well, if this whole, this one page is all about finding the one thing that makes everything else easier to me, I'm like, well, it's, it's leverage. It's understanding the, the certain way in which things have to move. And so my mind was like firing off. And I'm like, well, this makes complete sense because the way I've been teaching now is that's the first thing I look for. I look for, I look how, how people move the basketball in connection with their bodies. And is the ball apart? Is, is, is it like, I'd say the majority of people move the basketball like it's not a part of them. They move it like it is this separate object, which it is. Yes. But we can do things to kind of make it a part of us in a way mm. that everything becomes easier. And I've noticed through working, if I can tackle that and get a player to understand that, everything else becomes so much easier. The hand placement, the follow through, all this, because the, the, just the way we have to move the basketball to get energy out into it um, usually sets us up biomechanically in a, in, a, in a much more repeatable way. So like hand placement starts to take care of itself. Our shot line starts to take care of mm -hmm. itself. Like we have to work on posture and stuff like that a little bit, but like that's, and that's where I was like, man, this is like, to me, I'll continue to dig into this and try to like simplify it to the point of, I can't simplify it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Einstein, there was a quote, uh, Einstein said, make things as simple as possible, but not simpler, right? So mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna yeah. try to do. Make it as simple as possible. Um, but not simpler. And uh, that was my big one thing, understanding how the ball has to move in connection with our body and understanding our levers, meaning the, the wrist, the elbow, shoulder area, and then our hips and how they have to move together at one point, but also how they have to kind of move separately at certain points in our shot. So yeah, that's, that was the big, that was the one thing that I took from the book. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've also done the uh, recently of digging into books, second times, third times, and it's, it is incredible how your life circumstance at the time of reading it changes yeah. how, how, what the, the exact same information that's in the book just hits you completely differently. Yeah. You, do you, do, do you follow uh, Tom Bilyeu from Impact Theory? I do not know. So Tom Bilyeu will constantly always come back. I believe it's time, because he always talks about wanting it for other people, mm. right? Like, and his whole thing is like, he can see people that are struggling and he knows exactly what they need to do to get out of where they're at the struggle but they don't want to accept the advice yet. And so his whole thing, some quote that says, um, when the student is ready, the teacher will show, oh, right? That's and that's exactly what you just said. These books can be teachers, right? And until we're actually ready to receive the information, it doesn't, they're just words. That's why like when kids or players that I have, they'll come to me and they'll say, man, Mike, you, you, you got my shot, right? This is feeling so good. You did, I'm always like, dude, I just, get, I just gave you information. Mm. that's it i gave you information you had to apply the information that's that's your work right that's your work i'm i'm gonna give the information and all i got but mm. with but with, without you implementing it, it they're just words right it's just it's just words so without implementation i mean i i would love to take credit for somebody's success but i can't yeah, like yeah. i'm just a, i'm a piece i'm a piece but you're the person who's actually going through it is the real is the real person responsible for the success that that quote of when the students ready the teacher will appear i've said it to a couple of friends over the last couple of days because i've just felt myself personally like that's just manifesting so many ways whether it's books i read or relationships that are coming into my life or opportunities just yeah, to, to speak with cool people um last thing and we've talked about reading a little bit but i asked you for your your top five yes. books of uh that you've read over the past probably six months to a year uh, sort some synopsis, why it's great, and give the people a reason to read them. Yes. This is the only thing I'm – usually I never prepare for interview. Like, I'll never do it. But this is the one question. So I was like, well, I'll, I'll prepare. So obviously, we'll, we'll go here, the one thing, mm -hmm. right? I already kind of I already, I already kind of got into this thing. But if you're, if you're one of those people that's jumping around from thing to thing, trying to get good at it, um, or, or trying to find your thing, uh, pick one and just go all in. Mm. right go go all in on that on that thing and you're going to see where and leave the other stuff to the side because you're going to see great great benefits to it but that ties into this one so this is mastery by george leonard and 
I, I like to say that book will expose somebody within the first 25 to 30 pages. Mm. Because if you think that you are actually going down the path of mastery, you think you want to be really good at what you do, this book will require you to look in the mirror and say, oh, what kind of learner am I really? Am I somebody that says they want to do it and then I go full bore for two weeks and then I kind of leave it, leave it to the side? You know, am I just, do I just dabble? Do I do that? So it, I think it really exposes, are you really ready for the long-term Mm. success like the long, not, not the long-term success, the long-term journey that's involved in becoming a master at something Absolutely. and it's phenomenal he talks the one story i'll tell real quick that just had the biggest impact on me is when he talks about um the the specific martial art that he's involved in and how the creator of that martial art was on his deathbed and asked to be buried in his white belt and to me that's like the epi- it's the epitome of the eternal learner mm. right here's the guy that created the martial art was the absolute best at what he did and when he was ready to die, he said, bury me in my white belt as just a symbol of I'm still learning. Right. Mm, like that's yeah. to me, that's if you're a real teacher, if you really like teaching, that's the coolest story in the world to me. Right. That's a that's a phenomenal story. All right. This is this is the second one. So this this I had never heard of this book until somebody recommended it. So this is called The Science of Getting Rich by okay. Wallace Waddles. And yes, it's about making money. But and then I, I don't. I don't want that to come across as a shallow thing, but we need to make money. Absolutely. Um, but within that, you can apply the science of getting rich to the science of becoming successful in whatever it is you want to do. Mm. And there's, there's things throughout that book. He always talks about doing things a certain way. There's a certain way of going, thing, going about things to get the results from them. So whether that be you want to become rich, you want to become a great shooter, you want to become a, a whatever. That book is so full of incredible, incredible stuff. And it's, you can read it in a day. Right. The one guy who recommended me that book, he'll, he'll, he'll give me these books. And what he calls them is a uh, day to read lifetime to master. Right. Mm, day to yeah, read yeah. lifetime to master books. So that that's one of them. That's a day to read a lifetime to master. You're always and I, I re, I've probably read that book now like four times um, just because I like I'm like, man, I got to it gets your mind in a specific place that you you can't almost always get to on your own. All right. So that's three. This one right here, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I know that's recommended by everybody. This is the perfect example of when the, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher will show. I read this years ago and got nothing out of it. I read it again at the beginning of quarantine, and it completely shifted my mindset and actually helped my, the business side of basketball explode mm-hmm. for me. So um, awesome, awesome, awesome book. I would say only read this book if you're truly committed to going all in on what it is that you say you want to do. And if, if, it, if, if your heart, if your heart of heart is on that goal, this book will be incredible for you. It will be yeah. ab- absolutely fantastic. So I'm reading this again right now. And then the last one, and this is a commitment, man, this was a commitment, but it was incredible. So if, if you've read this, you have to read this, the law of success by Napoleon. So okay. I think they can grow rich. They can grow rich is right around 300 pages. Law of success, you're looking at like around 600. So it's like double the size. Mm. Law of success or think and grow rich is like the spark notes version of the law of success. Mm. Have you, have yeah. you read the law of success? I have not. I've read, I've, I've read think and grow rich and I'm actually listening to it as like on audiobook right now again. So yeah. Yeah. So law of success, that's think and grow rich came out of the law of success. It was like a way to boil down mm. like these principles and everything like that. But the law of success is incredible, man. It is, uh, it's another one of those books that if, you, if it, it's life changing, if you let it be, you know what I mean? It's just, there's so much information out there, man. There's so much. I get so excited talking about books, but yeah, man, I, that, these, th- those are my top five that I've read during quarantine um, and during the pandemic, the, this whole pandemic thing that have uh, just had, you know, huge, huge impacts on me and, and, and not just me, but the people, the people I work with and, and my business and all that kind of stuff. So those are my five, man. I love it. I just wanted to personally say to you how grateful I am of you putting your content out there, um, allowing Great. myself. Man, if, if, if I had, and again, I probably wasn't ready at the time, but if I would have been a player at the time of seeing your content, my career would have went completely differently. And I'm, <laughs> I'm at peace with where my career is now. But the, my enjoyment of the game of basketball is, is I'm having the most fun playing that I ever had 
um, awesome. in large part because of your teaching and being able to implement some of that stuff. And, That's awesome. And now being able to pass along some of that knowledge to the kids and the players that I work with has been um, truly fulfilling these last couple months. So I appreciate well, you for that. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, man. I see the stuff that you, the, the time that you put in and you, you, you go through this, this thing of understanding where I had a conversation with another guy the other day that there was a, that I, I like to call like myself a teacher rather than a coach because mm -hmm. a coach, very broad teacher. I teach like I, that's what I do. So I, I'll say I was having a conversation with another teacher and, um, and we, we, we were just talking about how rare it is to find people that love the process of, of the learning and the implementing and the trying it out and going through it because it's, it's not as common as you think, right? So I see the stuff that you're, you're diving into and I see a lot of myself in that because like the wheels are turning, you're starting to implement it. You're gonna have these days where it's like these huge light bulbs are gonna go off for you and you're like, oh my God, this makes complete sense, right? And there are going to be things that are so obvious that you're, you're, you would think to yourself, what was I doing? What was I doing all this time that now this all of a sudden, this seems so easy, yeah. but it, it's, it's going to come for you, man. It's going to be really, really cool to see as you progress, as long as just keep going with it, right? Like, don't, don't stop going. Um, there's, there's so few people that immerse themselves in it to the point where they become really, really good at it. You know what I mean? So yeah. keep going with it, man. And then I, uh, Obviously, I'm here, so you can always you can always reach out to me, and I'll, I'll I'll help you out any way I can. Beautiful, and uh, with that, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up this conversation. Thank you again so much, Mike. And uh, like I said, I'll, we're gonna put all of your stuff in notes and whatnot. So oh, no, oh, cool, don't worry man. about cool. that. All right, have a great rest of the day, sir. All right, brother, have a good one, man.